Hi, this is Mark Davidson with Camfil USA. There's been a lot of talk in the news lately about air filtration. Our company, in fact, has been invited to uh, consult on a couple of uh, articles with major uh, network news shows, uh, which is always good. Any opportunity you can have to get the, uh, the news about air filtration out to the public is a good thing. Um, one of the downsides of that might be that a complex topic like air, air filtration, which is based on sound uh, engineering and scientific principles, it's sometimes hard to get all that information out in a segment time allotted on a news show. So what we'd like to do today is to talk to the manager of national accounts for Camfil, Greg Herman. Greg spends a lot of his time in these buildings that have been in the news a lot lately. These are retail malls, uh, office buildings, hotels, different places like that. Generally, you sum these up with the uh, phrase, I guess you could say publicly accessible buildings. These are areas where any of us could walk into. Now, filtration in those facilities is very important. And there's been a topic going around quite a bit in the news, and that's what we want to talk to Greg about. So, Greg, take a few minutes, if you would, and introduce us to yourself. Thanks, Mark. As you said, my name is Greg Herman. I manage national accounts for Campbell USA. And just a little background on me, I, I've been with Camfil many years, began as a territory sales manager and worked through branch manager, regional manager, healthcare segment manager, and now uh, handling the national account part uh, for Camfil, and uh, it's been an exciting thing. Thanks, Greg. Great. So I, I guess let me ask you a question. So it seems like every day we hear something new on the news about COVID you know, wear face masks, don't wear face masks, you know, all different kind of things. So we're really kind of constantly in flux. But when it comes to air filtration, that's a topic, again, as I said, has been in the news a lot. And one of the phrases that's been in the news is MERV 13. That's been a requirement in a couple of areas and a guideline and a strong suggestion in some others. So in your experience, when you talk to facility managers at buildings, well, how does that conversation go? What are they asking you for and what are you able to tell them? Well, Mark, Canfil came out early uh, in the pandemic, and uh, using our experience and expertise in the industry, we were able to make recommendations based on that experience. And um, uh, there's been a lot of conversation about what type of filtration, and uh, because Canfil has been a player in the market for a long time, we were able to draw on past experiences and point out that what we've got are two situations here where we're looking at respiratory droplets versus nuclei. And in public spaces, the respiratory droplets are the larger, heavier uh, of the two that fall or collect on surfaces. But the nuclei is what we're most worried about is they're expelled. And because they're much lighter and smaller in size and weight, that uh, they can linger in the atmosphere or linger in the ambient area for a much longer period of time. Those can be caught up into the HVAC system and recirculated, and that potentially can affect and infect more people at the same time. So those are the two primary factors that we're focusing on at this time. Okay, great. So then um, if I remember this very publicly announced, uh, um, New York State was talking about HEPA filters mandate in, um, in retail malls, and that was backed off of, and then that mandate was replaced. If you're a large mall in New York State, you have to have MERV 13 filtration and New York and California are oftentimes trendsetters and it kind of goes across the country. So in your opinion, is MERV 13 an efficiency uh, that's, that's viable to attack those uh, respiratory droplets and uh, droplet nuclei that you were just talking about that? Well, Mark, that's a great question. And it has a very complicated answer. Our vice president of R&D has fortunately done a lot of work and a lot of research in this area. And we've looked at respiratory infection rate for many years uh, within HVAC and, and filtration systems. Well, what we see is that the smallest, these nuclei, which are the smallest droplets, are the most infectious by volume in that they don't collect on surfaces primarily because these fall into the 0.5 or sub-micron level. And these are able to linger and get caught into HVAC systems and be circulated within a building. Now, if you look at someone when they sneeze or cough, these respiratory droplets that come out are much larger in size and that are easily captured by masks such as the N95 mask that we hear a lot about, lower MERV filters based on the size. But what our experience tells us is to be absolutely sure that you take the best 
precaution that you can, we would recommend, of course, a HEPA filter, which would filter out 99.97% of the particles. Now, in relation to a MERV 13A filter that we hear people talking about, is that a MERV 13A filter is more along the lines of an 80 to 85% filter. But the critical component there is that when you look at a MERV 13 filter, you understand that it's a MERV 13A, meaning that it is actually filtering at the MERV 13 level. And that's a, that's a very uh, important part of the component. Now, we recommend that if your system has the capacity and the racks for your filtration have the capacity, we recommend a MERV 15 or MERV 16 uh, as long as your equipment can, can, can handle that. And, and, and the way to find that out is either through your maintenance program internally, a qualified HVAC or engineering firm that can uh, take a look, uh, go over your system, look at what your capacities are, and uh, I think a, a basic measure would be use the filtrate, use the highest level of MERV A filtration that your system can handle. Okay, Greg, let me ask you a question because uh, we've had other conversations about this too. So you mentioned MERV and then you mentioned another time MERV A, you've mentioned MERV 13, and another point you mentioned MERV 13A. Now, is there an easy way to distinguish what you mean by those two? Because I have a feeling those are two vastly different things. Okay, Mark, so that's a great question. When we talk about MERV and MERV values, uh, that is based on ASHRAE standards that we go by here in the United States. And ASHRAE has determined on, under 52.2 of the standard how we test the filter. And we have two values. We have the initial value of the filter when it's manufactured and it's new in the box. And then we have a MERV-A value that is under the op Appendix J of ASHRAE 52.2 that says, based on the, the environment that it will operate in, will it drop in efficiency? And what we find is that the synthetic electrostatically charged MERV-13 MERV filters that are available on the market today have a MERV-A value of 8. So they're a MERV-13, MERV-8A. So even though we check the box saying we have a MERV-13 filter, the MERV-13 synthetically charged filter will only be as efficient as an equivalent MERV-8 fleet. So it becomes complicated, but again, we recommend a MERV-13A, MERV-14A, MERV-15A. We don't recommend a MERV-13, MERV-8A. So the, one of the things that I think the facility managers and the facility owners can look at is what is the MERV-A value of their filter, not just the initial MERV, but the MERV-A value. Okay. All right. Now that makes sense. I, I agree. That's a complicated topic. And that's what I was talking about a little bit when you, uh, um, you're involved in a news organization, you're trying to get a lot of information out in a relatively short period of time. That's a difficult story, but very critical story to get across because capture efficiency, particle capture efficiency is the key. And if you think you're getting MERV 13 and you're really only getting eight, um, that, that's critical. Let me ask you another question. Then you talked about bringing in um, uh, people to, to look at your equipment and things like that. So if they come into your building and look at your equipment and you have a lot of space, then you have a lot of different options. You can use all the filters that are available to you and you should be able to find one that'll give you the level of risk that you're comfortable with. But if you only have a small, what we call packaged rooftop unit, something like that, where you only have a two inch track and you happen to be either living under a actual regulatory mandate where you have to put in a MERV 13, or in other words, as you just said, we have to check the box, um, then what are your options? Because as you just said, if you put in a MERV 13 charge, even though you're checking the box and you're doing what you're told, you, you're really not accomplishing that. So are there any options for a person who may be outside of a, of a mandatory zone, but who keeps hearing about MERV 13? What could they do to actually improve the air quality? Great question, Mark, and I get that every day. <clears throat> so one of the things that we recommend is anytime you have the space, you want to use a 12-inch deep filter, and we prefer that you use a MERV, a 12, a MERV 15A 12-inch deep filter. The problem that we've got is many of these facilities are only set up to hold one-inch or two-inch pleats. I'm not aware of a MERV 13A or MERV 15, 15A filter that will provide that level of filtration that we can fit in a two inch depth. It's just physically impossible to put the amount of media that's required to filter at that level in two inch, unless you go into a very special made filter. And we manufacture filters that 
R is narrow as two inches, that will provide MER 15, 14A, that is better than 13A. But these are these filters cost more. There's a higher operational cost. There's a higher resistance to airflow, and although everything has been everything has increased in cost since COVID began, this is an option. But the operational cost of moving to this program is something that needs to be looked at. So we can measure effectively the cost of the filtration, the cost of the energy, and the cost of the labor required to look at the total <clears throat> the total cost of ownership as it relates to the filter program that that somebody may use. So. One of the things that you can do is you can go down to a MERV 13, MERV 12A filter. The operational cost is higher, again, than a pleat, but the MERV 12A will offer protection that is much more substantial than, say, the MERV 13, MERV 8A we spoke about, which was primarily a 30 to 35% filter, where a 12A or MERV 13A filter will get into the 80 to 85% level of filtration. So basically, it just falls on to the budget and the ability of the equipment that they have at hand as to what it can handle. Okay, so um, one other last thought because I've had some experiences in other industries and things. When there's a big nationwide push that suddenly kind of changes the paradigm, so to speak, and all of a sudden everyone then is looking at a different product maybe than they, what they had before. And we're talking you know, millions of buildings across the country. And in this case, there seems to be a big push where everyone's looking to get MERV 13 two inch filters. Because as you said, so many of these facilities, that's all they have space for, two inch track. So now they hear MERV 13. So you put those two things together, everyone's looking for a two inch MERV 13 filter. Now, just strictly from a supply point of view and in your business, would you anticipate a shortage of material coming up? Because now again, all of a sudden, everyone's looking for a MERV 13. Many of these people never did that before. Do you see that coming in the filtration segment? Yeah, Mark, so that's a good question. I'm glad you brought it up. Because the same media that is used to manufacture a MERV 13, MERV 8A filter is also used to manufacture the mask that everybody's or most people are wearing these days, we have already seen a shortage of that electrostatically charged media. Uh, everything that we can find now is being diverted for N95 type masks uh, for healthcare first line uh, responders. And it's created a shortage globally for this electrostatically charged media. So for people that are gonna be required to purchase a MERV 13 electrostatically charged MERV 8A filter, they can expect a much longer lead time and these extended lead times now can, can easily run into the, to the 60, 90, 120 day lengths. Okay, so, and, and again, just to summarize that part, because that's a good point. Uh, so much of this electrostatically charged media is being diverted to respiratory mask because a, a respiratory mask with, a respiratory, with an electrostatically charged media is ideal because you get a high capture efficiency at a very low resistance, so it's easy to breathe from. But again, as you stated, it's not likely to last long. We don't wear a mask more than a day or so, and then we replace them. Filters, of course, last three, four, six months. Okay, great. That's a lot of information. I guess maybe we have to sum it up real quick. Basically, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what, you, what I heard you say is if someone comes into a building, a competent, qualified HVAC professional comes into your building and looks at your equipment and, and determines you have room to put in a six, 12, or even deeper filter, and that you should do that because you've got all the filter options available to you. If you have a two inch filter, then there are some other options and you just might have to, I don't wanna say it this way exactly, but maybe it fits, you might have to bite the bullet. As you said, COVID-19 has made a lot of things expensive and this just may be the cost of doing business, but you need to protect the air quality in your building. And if you, if you can't do that, then you've got the options like this 9A filter that you were talking about. Is that, does that pretty well sum up everything? It does, that's correct. Great. All right, Greg, thank you. This is a complicated topic and appreciate your input. I know you've been in this business for a long time. You've seen this firsthand for quite a while. So I think we would encourage everybody to reach out and contact Greg or just do your own investigation on this and read up on the, uh, the difficulties of um, achieving MERV 13 efficiency in such a small space as two inches. So Greg, thanks again for your time and we appreciate everyone for watching. 
Okay, thanks, Mark. I appreciate the invitation. Have a good day.